Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my review of the Rode NT-USB Mini, a compact USB microphone designed for gamers, podcasters, musicians, streamers, or people like me who need to record voiceovers for their videos. And in fact, I'm using the NT-USB Mini right now to record this audio. Announced in February 2020, it's a compact and more affordable alternative to the original NT-USB microphone from 2014, and that's a model that I personally use for most of my voiceovers. I'll make a bunch of audio comparisons between them later, but I'm going to start with their features and designs. The NT-USB Mini costs around $99 or pounds, while the larger NT-USB costs around $169 or pounds. That obviously makes it more expensive, although do look out for bargains. When I made this video, some sellers in the UK, for instance, were offering the NT-USB for only about £10 more. I'll pop links in the description and also the pinned comment for you to check the latest prices. Here's the original NT-USB microphone on the left and the newer Mini on the right, and it's clear to see how much more compact the Mini is. Surprisingly though, the Mini actually weighs a few grams more at 585 grams versus 520 grams, thanks mostly to its rather substantial metal bracket, which allows the inner microphone unit to rotate freely by 360 degrees. This gives you great flexibility when it comes to mounting. Now both microphones feel reassuringly solid in your hands and in the first bonus over its older sibling the Mini has a built-in pop filter whereas the original is supplied with a large separate filter that makes it considerably bigger to carry around. Both microphones share quite a lot in common. They both employ condenser capsules with a cardioid polar pattern which basically means they're directional and designed to pick up audio primarily from the front with a little from the sides and mostly reject sounds coming from the rear. I mean, put in simple terms, it's designed to record you, the talent, and not the stuff that's going on around you. Rode quotes the frequency response of both microphones as 20Hz to 20kHz, although the dynamic range of the Mini's A to D converter is higher at 24-bit versus 16-bits on the original. For most work, though, you're more likely to notice a difference in their actual capsules. Both mics are designed for use on either tabletops with their supplied stands or mounted on an optional boom arm or a microphone stand. The mini stand is more convenient though, it's smaller and it connects magnetically compared to a more conventional screw-in tripod for the original model. Just a quick note though, when you first unpack the mini it's designed for fitting directly onto its supplied tabletop stand. If you want to mount it on an arm or a microphone stand or a tripod, you'll need to screw in again a supplied threaded accessory and then you'll need to unscrew that again if you want to put it back on the stand whereas the original NT-USB just has a threaded mount and a screw mount on the little tabletop tripod so it's quite easy to switch between them if that's the sort of thing you're likely to do. They're both class compliant USB devices which means they'll work on Macs, Windows PCs or even tablets without a driver so long as there's a USB port to deliver power and receive the audio. Note, because these are digital USB microphones, you can't connect either of them directly to the analog microphone input on a digital camera. While the old NT-USB employs a traditional USB-B port, the new Mini opts for a more modern USB-C, although both are supplied with cables that end in an old-style USB-A plug. The Mini's supplied cable is much shorter. Both have 3.5mm headphone jacks with zero latency options, which let you directly monitor audio without delay or echo. Both also have volume dials and you can push to click the Mini's dial to switch between monitoring the microphone directly or when using it as a headphone amplifier with your computer. But the original NT-USB sports a second dial to adjust the mix with audio from the computer which can be handy for balancing the volumes when gaming or talking to someone. This is one of the main benefits of the original model but that said I didn't find its absence that big an issue on the Mini. Ok, now for some audio comparisons between them. Ok, for my first audio test, I'm going to start with the Rode NT-USB Mini, which you can see in front of me here. I just provide a little bit of contrast <laughs> against my dark jumper there. And I'm using pretty much the same setup that I used to record the voiceover just a few moments ago. The only difference is, is that even though I'm in the same room, I've opened my curtains in front of me, which is what I use for some natural light when I'm filming. Normally, if I'm just doing a voiceover without doing a piece to camera, I close those curtains. They're big, heavy velvet curtains, which means they're really good at absorbing echoes and other reflections. So with the curtains open, I'm facing some glass. The sound may be a little bit brighter or brasher than before let me know what you think but otherwise the distance and the positioning is about the same as before I'm about five inches away from the microphone which is a good position for voiceover work now if only I had some consistent passage that I could wait a minute 
This looks like a good book, In Camera by Gordon Lang. Let's uh, read the forward and see how we get on. Some people say you need to master manual mode to be a proper photographer. Some say you must shoot in RAW to be taken seriously. Some say you need a big camera to take great photos, or you're just messing around. Me? I say nonsense to all of that, and in this book, I'll show you why. Okay, for direct comparison, I've now switched over to the original Rode NT-USB. As you can see before me, it is uh, much larger on the frame. Although when I'm recording voiceovers for my other videos with a piece to camera that's included, I found it works pretty well if I just lower it down a bit, come in a little bit tighter with the camera, and then you can avoid seeing the microphone but still record great quality audio. But for this test, I want you to see it in the frame, and I'm about five inches away, as I was with the Mini just a few seconds ago. Okay, now when this microphone is facing you, the only other thing that you'll notice is the indicator light on the front is a rather nice little bluey, purpley violet light as opposed to the two white lights on the NT USB Mini. Right now, for that passage from my book. Some people say you need to master manual mode to be a proper photographer. Some say you must shoot in RAW to be taken seriously. Some say you need a big camera to take great photos, or you're just messing around. Me? I say nonsense to all of that, and in this book, I'll show you why. Okay, now for my second audio test, and this time I'm going to get much closer to the microphone for that breathy, more resonant style. I've switched back to the Rode NT-USB Mini for this first test, so I'm going to get about one inch away from the microphone, and I'm going to talk a little bit more quietly so I don't saturate those levels. It's hard not to do a radio voice when you're this close to a microphone, I don't know why. Some people say you... M or an American accent. I don't know why I always break into a uh, movie trailer voice here. Billions of years ago when people only had access to raw files. In a world where people shoot JPEG and raw. Some people say you need to master... I've got it. Do you... Some people say you need to master manual mode to be a proper photographer. Some say you must shoot in raw to be taken seriously. Some say you need a big camera to take great photos, or you're just messing around. Me? I say nonsense to all of that, and in this book, I'll show you why. Okay, for direct comparison, let's try the same test with the Rode NT-USB, the original model which I have before me here. So I'm going to get pretty close and see what happens. Speak a little bit more quietly because I've got to be careful of my levels. Now, the uh, pop shield that comes with it here is obviously limiting how close I can get to it. You could remove that if you like, but this is as close as I'm going to get. So, let's read the book. Some people say, I'm doing the American accent again. Some pe some, I've got to stop. Some people say you need to master manual mode to be a proper photographer. Some say you must shoot in RAW to be taken seriously. Some say you need a big camera to take great photos, or you're just messing around. Me? I say nonsense to all of that, and in this book, I'll show you why. Okay, for my third test, I've moved to a much noisier environment. I'm at the station, and I'm first of all using the Rode NT-USB Mini. You can just see it down here at the bottom of the frame. I've got it angled up pointing at me but I'm about eight inches away and there's typical ambient noise around me lots of people walking about the noise of trains getting ready to go and of course some announcements and being bright and some seagulls in the background too now what I should say when I did set this up is that it was very very quick and easy with the NT USB mini it just clipped onto the stand magnetically there was no screwing in to do I literally just pulled it out of my bag stuck it on the stand stuck it in front of me and started recording so it was very quick very easy and also pretty discreet as well. Well, obviously the least discreet part is that I'm recording this with a USB recorder, which in this instance is my laptop, which I don't really like getting out in this sort of environment, but um, it's a USB microphone, so that's what you do. Okay, let's move on to the next microphone. Okay, for direct comparison, I've now switched over to the original Rode NT-USB microphone, which you can see right here in front of me it's a fairly substantial microphone and that's the biggest difference when you're recording in this sort of environment I wanted to get my laptop out connect a microphone and get recording as quickly as possible but as you already know I needed to screw in the tripod base uh, to make this a tabletop uh, microphone it's certainly not as quick as connecting it magnetically to the little stand of the NT USB Mini. And obviously, it's a much more substantial microphone and it's taken up so much more space in my bag and 
previously people were going past and they didn't really notice what I was doing but now they can see I've got this giant microphone on this tabletop so it's not as discreet as the mini but you may think it's worth it uh, perhaps for a difference in sound quality or for some other features maybe you actually do want to be less discreet you want people to know what you're doing or to look more professional if that's a factor in your decision making anyway that's it for this test now let's get on with the rest of the review Okay, now for my verdict and I'm back to using the NT-USB Mini. So which one should you buy? In terms of audio quality alone, I really like the sound of both microphones for voice work, although personally, I feel the original NT-USB has the edge of the Mini. And if you're mostly in a fixed location, I'd say it's worth spending the extra on that model. Certainly, if you're an existing NT-USB owner who, again, mostly records from just one location, I don't see any reason to switch. Now, audio style and quality is, of course, highly subjective, so you may prefer the Mini. But one thing isn't subjective, and that's the convenience of the Mini when it comes to portability. It may not weigh less than the original model, in fact, it weighs a few grams more, but it does take up way less space in your bag. It doesn't need a separate pop filter, and it's quicker to mount on its supplied stand. If you record in many different locations, the Mini is going to be easier to transport and faster to set up once you get there. As such, I'm actually planning on using the Mini for my trips away when I need to record decent quality audio, say, from a hotel or meeting room. It's also cheaper than the original NT-USB, although again, do look out for discounts on the older model because there are some really good deals available. Ultimately, if you don't already own a decent USB microphone for this kind of work, I'd recommend the original NT-USB if you have a semi-permanent or fixed location, but I'd go for the NT-USB Mini if you're more likely to be using it in multiple locations. Both, of course, can be adapted to do either job very well, but that's my personal recommendation now that both models are available. Let me know what you think in the comments and which are your favourite microphones. As always, if you found any of this useful, please do subscribe. And if you really liked it, don't forget you can treat me to a coffee or treat yourself to my in-camera photography book or some Camera Labs merch. Links to everything, including checking the latest prices, are below. Thanks for watching and especially thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye bye.